Hey guys, today we're going to look at a very strange structure known as lion's paws in Siguria. Siguria is a giant rock with a flat top. This place is also known as Ravana's Palace, located in Sri Lanka. When you start climbing Siguria, it's usually a series of stairs with almost no place to rest. But there's one flat area in between where people rest halfway before going to the top. This is a very interesting place because it shows something bizarre. Two giant paws of a strange animal. These are giant feet. I've not seen anything like this before. I mean, this is huge. You can see how small I look when compared to it. Each paw is at least 10 feet tall and 10 feet wide. I mean, it's impossible not to think of the giant legs of the Sphinx at the Great Pyramid of Giza. What's even more strange, Sri Lankans do refer to this as lion's paws or lion gate, which is similar to the modern Egyptians claim that uh, the Sphinx is also part lion. But are these really lion's paws? Look at the large nails. It's quite clear that this is not human. It looks like the claws of a fierce animal. The details are fantastic. There are two curves made where the nails meet the flesh at the end. If you look carefully, there is a little toe as well. So there are three bigger toes and one small toe in each leg. In Sri Lanka, they are popularly known as lion's paws or lion entrance because many experts claim that these toes belong to a lion. But this is absolutely wrong. These are not lion's paws. Lions do not have four toes. They have five toes. Other similar mammals like tigers also have five toes, not four toes. The ancient boulders clearly showed three large toes and one small rudimentary toe or a pinky toe. So what animal do these toes belong to? Ancient reptiles had four toes. They mostly had three large toes and one small toe. Let's take dinosaurs, for example. You're looking at the toes of a T-Rex. He has four toes, three large ones, and one tiny one. Look at the similarity. Pay attention to the rough scales on his uh, ankle. The ancient boulders have even tried to show the scales in Syria. Look at the wavy lines made on the structures as well. These represent scales. This definitely represents an ancient reptile. What is that powerful reptile? None other than Ravana himself. Now, Ravana is said to be the greatest king of Sri Lanka, so great that Sri Lanka's first satellite was named Ravana. Sigiriya is also known as Ravana's palace. But how can Ravana be a reptilian? How can he have legs like this? But when we look at ancient texts, strange details start to appear. First, Ravana was not fully human, only his father was human. His mother was a completely different species, perhaps a reptilian. When Ravana was born, he had the qualities of a hybrid species. In the Western world, these hybrids are called Nephilim. In some ways, he was human. In other ways, he was not human, he was superhuman. For example, it's well known that he was a giant. He was about 10 feet tall. But Ravana showed other reptilian characteristics. He was capable of shape-shifting. He could modify his appearance and deceive others. He could also become invisible by blending with the environment like a modern-day chameleon. The Thai tax Ramakian mentions that Ravana's skin was green like a chameleon. Human skin cannot be green. He definitely had reptilian blood in him. 
In Sri Lanka, several reptiles are named after Ravana. For example, this snake is called Ravana Ge Medilla and even has the scientific name Apsidura Ravanai after King Ravana because of his reptilian descent. During my travels in Sri Lanka, I saw many snake charmers who considered themselves as descendants of Ravana and they say Ravana was born with Naga ancestry. Today we think the word Naga only means snake, but these charmers say that their original ancestors were humanoid with two feet and two arms, but also had strange powers like shape-shifting and can even become invisible. The Nagas simply used cobra as their symbol because the cobra was an easily recognizable reptile due to its inflating or flaring hoot. They believe that their reptilian ancestors disappeared underground and promised to return someday. Initially, I thought this was just local folklore, but it's recorded both in ancient Tamil texts and Sinhala texts that Nagas were the original inhabitants of Sri Lanka. This is why during ancient times, Sri Lanka was sometimes referred to as Nagadipa, and uh, ancient Greeks also called it Nagadibois. In Siguria, there is more evidence related to reptilians. There is an unbelievable structure known as Cobra Hood Cave. This is fantastic because it's a giant rock which is shaped like a cobra with its inflated hood. It's impossible to have this kind of a curve naturally, but this is not the only curve. It also has yet another curve at the bottom. In fact, no one knows how it's still standing. If you look at the center of gravity of this rock, it should have fallen down, but amazingly, it's still standing as though we're using some anti-gravity technique. Of course, you may think this is all completely natural and locals gave a name for this. But that's not true because if you look carefully, you can see the remains of some ancient paintings on this Cobra Hood cave. This is very tall, guys, so I have tried my best with my zoom camera. I can tell these are amazing paintings, but I cannot understand what they are showing because most of them are destroyed. While locals maintain that this was a giant Naga idol worshipped by Ravana, archaeologists completely deny that Ravana ever existed, and they maintain that this place was used by a king called Kashyapa around 500 AD. But, they also found an inscription dated much before his time, around 2nd century BC, which says that the Cobra Hood rock originally belonged to a king called Nagulia. So we do have strong evidence of Naga or reptilian connection in the Siguria complex itself. Now, even if you doubt that Ravana ever existed, if he had reptilian features and you classify all ancient texts as mirror mythology, you still have to agree that maybe human sculptors imagined Ravana's feet and depicted them here because these are definitely not lion's paws or tiger paws or something like that. See, the thing is, Siguria is the most underrated ancient site in the world. When you explore this place, you realize that reality can surpass your imagination. And as extraordinary as this place is, it's never been studied properly by experts. For example, some claim these paws are made of granite but they cannot be. They're made of simpler materials like brick and clay and then coated with lime mortar. This is why they look white. If you observe carefully, you can see the bricks at the base revealing themselves. 
Similarly, archaeologists are of the opinion that this was built in 5th century AD, roughly about 1,600 years ago. That's quite ancient, but in reality, these structures could be much, much older, taking us back to the time of Ravana's rule in Sri Lanka. Like this, there are many, many mysteries hidden in Sigiriya. So what do you think? Are these Ravana's feet or are these lion's paws? Was Sigiriya really Ravana's palace? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button to get all the updates. Please give this video a thumbs up and do share it with your friends. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.